Hello everyone, welcome to Geometry Nodes in 3.0. Today, I'll be showing you how to make the sci-fi generator effect. So to start off, let's go into a brand new scene with nothing in it. Add in a plane, and this will be the plane that our geometry node object is on. But what we also need to make is our ring object. Let's bring that over here. Extrude this up a bit. Bring it back so that it's centered. Set the shading to smooth. And that should be pretty much good. Let's add in a solidify modifier just for good measure. There we go. Now let's make the instancer for these rings, all with different scales and rotation. So let's add in a mesh primitive mesh line. Set this to zero so that the rings do not move after the first one or two. And add in an instance on point node. There we go. Hook this into the output. Make sure you drag in your circle right here, your circle object, put it into the instance. And as we could see, we have the circles here. Let me scale this down just a bit because it seems a little bit too big. There we go. Now let's add in a random value node, random value, set it to vector, plug that in there. And now as we could see, we are getting random rotations. But the problem that we can see here is that the scale is wrong. So in order to fix that, let's add in the index input. And what this does is for every vertice in our mesh line, it'll give a different value, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So as we could see, when we plug this into the scale output, that the uh, scales are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Way too big for what we're dealing with right now. So to fix that, let's add in a math node, set it to divide, plug that into there and that back into there. There we go. Let's set this to 10 to match the count. And this will make it so that the rings never exceed the kind of one or I guess two meter bounding box that we put it in. Let's uh, organize these nodes a little bit. Pretty good. And that is basically the entire effect if you want it to be still. But the thing is, we want it to move. So an easy way to do this is to add in a vector math scale node, scale right there, and just have this animate along with the frame. You could do that by doing hashtag frame divide by 24. Yeah, that seems pretty good. And it'll move along with the frame. That's a little bit too fast. But there is a problem with this. It's that it doesn't loop. We want this to loop. So in order to fix that, we need to use a vector, a or wait, a utilities rotate Euler node. Now we can set this to axis angle, plug the value into here, both into the rotation and the axis, and then plug this into the rotation output. And if we animate this, we could see that just by this one input, it rotates all the rings perfectly. And if we go over here, add in a keyframe, and at the end, add in a keyframe. This one has to be at 360 degrees. Let's select that. And wait, 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 one second. Press T and make sure you set the interpolation to linear. Now, if we keep playing this animation, we can see that it loops. So you can make this into all kinds of satisfying looping animations. Okay. But yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, the numbers here don't matter all too much, but I recommend having them at like negative five and five, if I can put that in, there we go. That just makes it so that the starting rotation is not zero. As we can see here, if it's too low, it doesn't work quite right. So just have it at a moderate value. And that is basically the entire effect. If you wanna know why I did with the shading, uh, Let's go into the shading. There we go. Let's go into here. We need to add in uh, some UV maps because it doesn't come pre-baked into this ring. Let's go into mark seam for right here and UV unwrap this ring. If we go into the UV editing part, we could see that we have our UV map right here. Well, we want to bring this into the middle and scale it up. This will become important later. There we go. Now let's go into the shading tab, add in a new material, and go into input and select UV map. If we view this, we can see, if I was in rendered view, that we have the UV map all ready to go. 
let's separate the x and y coordinates. In this case, we just want the y or, or the x. The y will give us the kind of ring around it, while the other one will give us the just that gradient. Let's add in a color ramp. Set this to white and this one to black. And we already got a nice ring look going. If we bring this into the middle, it'll give us a nice glowing section in the middle. What we could do next is hook that input into the emission. There we go. Let's set this to orange like the example I showed in the beginning of the video. Make it glow a bit more by setting the emission strength to something like uh, 20, 25. That seems pretty good. Set the metallic to 1. Bring it down a little bit. Set the roughness down a bit more. Let's add in a subdivision surface modifier as well. And as we can see, if we go back over here, the effect is looking pretty much perfect. Let's add in some more rings, just for fun's sake. Let's set this to 20. Set this also to 20. As we can see, all the rings are moving around quite nicely. You could set the seat to something different if some of the rings aren't moving the way you want them to. And yeah, that's basically the entire tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to support my channel, subscribe, look at my Twitter accounts, my Gumroad products, and I will see you in the next video.